Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Black. I'm a clinical professor of internal medicine at the New York University School of Medicine and president of the American Society of Hypertension. Today I want to talk about one of the oldest drugs that we still use, namely aspirin. Aspirin was first developed in the 19th century and is still a mainstay of many, many conditions. Not as an anti-inflammatory agent, uh, as we used to use it in very high doses, but now as a cardiovascular prevention drug. The use of aspirin has uh, sort of come and gone in times, and uh, as a result, the United States Preventive uh, Task Force has put out guidelines and guidances for who we should use it in and what we should use it for. They published their last results in 2002 and uh, were struck at that point by the fact that there were very few women represented in any of the trials they used to base their recommendations. Since then, the Women's Health Study, which had about 39,000 women in it, uh, a nice placebo comparison trial, uh, was published. And now they felt they had adequate data to begin to analyze that issue. As a result of that and a very large meta-analysis that was done, the new recommendations have come out and were recently published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. What those recommendations said was that for men over 45, an aspirin a day was very good for myocardial infarction prevention. And this was an A recommendation, where they could be reasonably sure and certain that this was beneficial. For women, it was age 55, but this was for stroke prevention. The data for myocardial infarction prevention in women wasn't considered strong enough, and in fact for men, the data for uh, stroke prevention wasn't strong enough. Now this is a little bit peculiar because when we make recommendations to patients or give drugs to patients, we don't say, are you taking this to prevent a stroke? Or are you taking it to prevent a heart attack? We're talking about preventing the overall issues. Now what's kind of peculiar about this, in my opinion, is that uh, this is based on uh, estimates of risk based on Framingham Heart Study and, and other, other similar uh, databases as to what the likelihood of an event is relative to the likelihood of, a, of harm. It's very, very uh, over-interpretation, again, in my opinion, of the precision of those, of those measurements. They're based on epidemiological studies. Uh, they assume that people are free of disease, and yet I think as we know, if we look hard enough, we can almost always find something. And uh, so if it's 10.6% of an event, and the drug is able to reduce events by 12%, that's considered good, and that's where the cutoffs come. I have a little trouble with that. The interesting thing, in, again, in my opinion, is that they do talk at this point about talking to the patient. Yes, there's risk of GI bleeding, and there's risk of hemorrhagic strokes. But uh, most patients would pr probably prefer not to have a stroke or a heart attack and take the risk that they might have a, a, a gastrointestinal hemorrhage if that were the, the choices. So here we take this large database, we take a group of people who are not necessarily seeing patients, and asking them what is really basic to any kind of therapeutic intervention is to ask the patient what, what they're worried about and to try to give numbers and put it around uh, our assessments. Now this was also uh, very unclear as to what dose of aspirin to use. We don't really know whether we should give a so-called baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, which is what we use in the United States, and 75 milligrams, which is used in much of the rest of the world, or whether we should give 325 milligrams. Whether enteric-coated aspirin or slow-release aspirin is really better than standard aspirin. Most of the studies that have tried to look at the, the harm of aspirin usage have not been able to find a benefit of prevention of GI bleeding by coding. So they would not make a statement about that. It turns out a recent, re recent trial, the Women's uh, Health Study, used aspirin every other day at 100 milligrams. And the Charisma group looked at their data. Now, now Charisma was a trial of aspirin plus clopidogrel. Uh, and uh, had, its, had its results and showed some benefit for high-risk people. But it was up to the doctors as to what aspirin to, dose to choose. Uh, some chose a lower dose, some chose a higher dose. So they did a retrospective analysis of that data, understanding that it wasn't randomized, 
that it's not as clear or as clean as you might get from a, a randomized controlled trial. And what it appeared from that analysis, also published in the same issue of the Annals of Internal Medicine, is that the higher dose of aspirin, over 100 milligrams, added no benefit to what the lower doses did and actually increased risk. So I think right now, if I and you were seeing a patient and try to make a recommendation, it probably is pretty clear that for men over 45 and for women over 55, that an, an aspirin a day, probably a low dose, is the way to go. For men under 45 or women under 55, there's very little data, very little data on, on the benefit, and this is a low risk group, so we have to take that into account. For people over the age of 80, who have the most cardiovascular events, once again, the data is insufficient to make a clear recommendation. Here, we have to use our judgment, and as in everything else we do in medicine, there's an art as well as a science, and sometimes the art of medicine has to overcome the lack of science. Thanks very much for your attention.